Hello, let's talk about thinning radishes. Because I'm a farmer now. Actually, forget that. Let's talk instead about virtual events and why so many people are getting it terribly, terribly wrong. Because it's not about just taking an on-stage event and shoving it into a webinar format. This is not a webinar. We're not creating those webinars at the moment. You know what we're doing? In my opinion, for what it's worth, we are TV producers. We are suddenly creating television. Now, for those of you who know me, you'll know I used to be in television. Nobody ever saw, but I was there. And I learned a great deal during that time. And what's fascinating across the last two or three months now of doing this is that those old rules are suddenly back in vogue because being on stage and having that whole stage experience with an audience bustling and chatting and networking is 100% fundamentally totally different to the television experience. And right now, and for the foreseeable weeks, maybe a couple of months, maybe a few more months after that, that's what we're doing. So new rules need to be applied now. And here's my quick guide. So what is a television program that we can compare the event space to? Well, I would go as far as to say it's something like Good Morning America or The Today Show. We're putting on a rolling, fast-moving, news-esque type of television program. What happens in those programs? Well, you've obviously got a host of some sort, could be one of your internal people, could be someone like me. You've also, of course, got guests who are either presenting ideas or are being interviewed. And most of all, you've got lots of these short little videos that space everything apart and keep the program moving. There's a flow to the hour. When we used to do GMTV in the UK, every single minute of the hour was mapped out. And that's what we need to do now. That's what we need to apply as a new discipline to the event space. Let's talk about live versus pre-recorded. There is a temptation to do it all live, right? How exciting. It's all happening there and then. People, your audience can interact. Your people can be there to interact with the audience members. But does it work? Well, first of all, and this is something I've learned over several recent events, you cannot rely on people's Wi-Fi signal to provide a robust and trustworthy connection because most of the time it's just not there. Many people, especially here in the US, have kind of run off to their vacation homes in the wilderness and they never invested in Wi-Fi there. And so the Wi-Fi is really weak. So the moral of the story is pre-record everything. Why? Because you're safe. But here's the twist. You deliver it as live. You're not tricking people and saying, oh, this is live. We are live. But what you are saying is we're going to run this from 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. You've got to be with us at 10 a.m. because that's when we're going to stream this amazing content. And I think, and it's a brave move, I think that a lot of it you don't make available afterwards. People have to be there for the live experience to receive and benefit from certain live moments. Having said that, there's a lot of content that you will have that you will want to be evergreen to live on afterwards. So you'll just have to decide where that's going to be. But your experience online on that screen should feel like the old days, the water cooler moment. It was going to broadcast at 8 p.m. You weren't going to miss it. The same is true for your event. Now, what can you do while it's running? Well, those are some live moments. Maybe you have a chat window. Maybe you have a kind of live Q&A. It could be text-based. It could be audio. If you're feeling brave, it could be live video. And those are the moments where you show that we're here. We are definitely here. So we've talked about live versus pre-recorded. What about duration? How long will someone sit and stare at this screen? Well, I like to stick to the rule of the movie length, okay? A really good movie is between an hour and a half and two hours. If it's an epic, maybe two hours 15. But is your event an epic? Well, you'll have to ask yourself that question. Any more than two hours, you're going to lose people. Why? Well, there's notifications coming in. There's kids screaming downstairs. There's radishes that need to be thinned out. We are living a different life. And as event producers and people in the event industry, we have to acknowledge that now. And so I think less is more. And in fact, I'll go a step further. And I would suggest that you apply not the rule of three, my old favorite, the rule of thirds. Cut it all in three. If you are going to speak for an hour, Mr. or Mrs. Executive, 
you're going to cut that in three and it's now going to be 20 minutes. If you intended on doing a 30 minute session, good on you old days, now it's 10 minutes. Why? Because we are goldfish again. We cannot stare at something for very long unless it's really compelling. And if you extend it too long, you're going to lose people. What about the new skill set? Well, your executives and even yourself, you may be great on stage and you probably are, but this is not stage. This is the camera lens. It's completely different. This is a whole new discipline because what we're doing here is we're talking to someone's eye and the temptation is to do what you always did on stage but you can't you have to maintain this kind of visual moment on camera you can look at your notes you can look at your computer you can check something on your phone but you've got to keep looking back at that lens and making that eye contact it's a new standard and you've got to make sure that everyone who's going to appear on camera on this tv show has got the skill to maintain that connection with the audience. Now, of course, every great event has guests, external guests. Your guests may be industry experts. Maybe they're even a celebrity or a guest speaker of some sort. I would suggest at this point, not suggesting to these people they put together a 20-minute keynote and sort of do it on camera, but put them through an interview instead. Because when you interview them, you keep it fresh, you keep it moving, you keep the image changing, which is very important for the viewer. They want to look at something changing. And we can do it. We can do it on Zoom or Skype or Blue Jeans. We can pre-record all these interviews, get them in the can, and have something truly compelling and nice and short, ready to go. Audience is so important. Your audience is everything. They are the heart of the event. So find different creative ways of including them in the event. This is just not one way. It feels like it when you're staring at a glass lens, but try to make it a two-way journey, a two-way experience. Here's one idea that I'm seeing being used and I'm recommending it to clients. Invite your audience. It could be select members, maybe partners, maybe people who are very active within the organization uh, to pre-submit questions or ideas or talking points. Set up some rules. Say to them, we want you to film it on your phone, right? That's easy. Got the iPhone ready. Film it horizontal. You can handhold it if you want and make it no more than 20 seconds. So they would sit there with the phone and go, Hey guys, I wish I could be with you, but I've got a question. How are we going to manage all the change coming up over the next three months unless we communicate at a higher standard? That's my question. Over to you. Right? That's all they have to do. And if you gather enough of those, you can use them as interstitials between different keynotes and presentations. You can use them to drive some of the live Q&A. But most of all, you can deploy them to show that the audience is the heart of your event. What about the future of our industry? Well, as I'm recording this, let's have a look here. It is May the 8th, so you'll see how much this has aged. Um, we're not going anywhere for the time being, but this will change. And when it does change, here's what I think is going to happen. And most of you are already on this. We're doing what's called twin track planning. You're planning for the live event, but just in case you're also planning for the virtual event. And that twin track is actually going to go all the way through to the events themselves. Because, and this is my guess, I could be completely wrong. I think we're going to have a lot of hybrid events in the near term. We will get together instead of a thousand people in the main convention center in a smaller setup, there'll be 200, but we'll be putting out the live stream and creating a live experience for those watching online. And it has to feel different. Maybe there's some color commentary going on on the virtual experience that we don't do in the live experience. Because frankly, in the live experience, we can all go out for drinks afterwards and create our own color commentary. So there's going to be a twin track hybrid approach, but then that's going to shift again. Sorry, I keep knocking my microphone. It's going to be shifting again and more and more people are going to be, I need to be out there. I need to come to the live event and you'll see a switch back. But I think virtual is going to be a channel that all of us are operating for quite some time, possibly for the foreseeable future and beyond, even alongside the live events. So we've got to get it right. I hope that was useful. I hope you found some ideas there that you could actually use and deploy. Whatever happens, though, remember, we're in this together. We are all going to get together again in person. But for the time being, we're making television.